today is the day that I wanted to do some experiments with you. So we're going to go over a few of them. And I, of course, welcome comments and questions. Hope you enjoy this uh, short presentation. Three distinct experiments. So I'm going to be using some power tools. I have my grinder with a diamond cutting wheel. I have a polishing grinder. And I have uh, a series of industrial grade diamonds held in a resin suspension and these are specifically designed for the polishing of natural stone such as this granite this is called blue pearl granite and if you like in and out hamburger um, this is what all of their countertops are made of franchise wide no exception blue pearl so you notice the uh, the backside raw where it breaks raw but it can be brought to a brilliant luster. So these discs, which I've been using for many years, are progressively uh, in their grit, 50 grit, and this is um, an industry tool designed to be used either wet or dry. So just as some background, we're gonna try to polish this brick, and possibly this brick. Also, I'm going to introduce the welder into the equation. And I'm going to take uh, this piece of metal, this piece of steel, and this is going to be cut with the grinder right down the middle so that the metal will be buried into the brick surface. Once that's completed, I'm going to apply the arc welder as close to the brick and possibly overlapping to get the brick superheated, possibly molten, possibly intermingled with the steel so that should be interesting then I have a couple pieces of red brick so this is a, just a normal broken shard and this is one that I have shown in many uh, on-site digs to be possibly melted brick and that's a piece of aluminum foil so we're going to install these into the microwave from a safe distance also going to do some cutting of material cutting of the brick so I've just got this uh, junk microwave, uninteresting, household, $100 unit. And we're gonna put it in there, all of these samples. So the aluminum foil uh, starts to spark after about 15 seconds. And my first preliminary is that this brick starts to get hot after uh, 30 seconds. And I will be using the infrared uh, laser pyrometer so we'll be able to see what the temperatures of our samples yield that's gonna be really interesting to see if um, once the heat penetration starts to expand you'll see the change in the color you'll see you'll see the change in the composition and it'll be curious right after the initial welding uh, to see how far the heat penetrates towards the edge so I hope you will enjoy the presentation. I'll go through each step uh, individually and with some brief commentary. I am outside where I have arranged what I'm calling my brick flow chart. And we're going to look at each of the individual samples that I've been collecting. If you've been following my channel, you'll notice that all of these pieces are directly documented extractions. I'm going to be doing this presentation completely from memory and I have no script and I have no cue cards and we're going to talk about the various things including some of the tools you might want to use if you feel like bashing so let's start here with just a common uh, old red brick possible Richmond name on the brick and bricks are very flat and very true and the corners are 90 and they are sharp and this is the only way that you can get uh, quality construction over long distance courses of bricks without having to worry about the shape of the brick found in a field. This one, if you'll remember, came out of the Napa River on a large section of brick wall with evidence of charring and scorching. And we're gonna look at the shape of this brick. I'm just using an aluminum straight edge just to show you that it is severely warped. And it is very concaved. And you 
remember where this came from and I took some care to extracting it and it has uh, some evidence of changing doesn't it so as I move along the flow chart let's, let's go with the red first so we'll see some conditions and some color this one going dark which goes over here this one is going red and you can see that it had uh, gaseous conditions full of air bubbles now and it goes this direction and you can see a very easy brick color and very dark transformations and it seems to be when there's a high silica content it seems to crystallize and we'd go that direction but we're going to stick with the red so various uh, components all of these are from the Napa Highlands Atlas Peak Monticello Road also uh, downtown Napa and creeks this was extracted above Wild Horse Valley Road and this seems to be some sort of a terracotta you remember seeing this inside completely charred going to a very crumbly terracotta and all color is removed and it has gone completely black at the end of the terracotta now we're to the darker and maybe some of the yellow yellow overlooked I'm gonna try to polish this one don't know this was from Monticello Road on the melted brick extraction tour I think I'm gonna cut this one in half and we're gonna see what's exactly inside and maybe apply a polish this one here has its mortar still intact with extreme coloration and there is iron content in brick and that does have the appearance of um, steel and I don't know if it's magnetic we're gonna find out thank you mark for your presentation on melted reality excellent presentation excellent evidence every single time so I've got a magnet on a string this is a metal table so we're going to identify then we start to see some of the extreme examples when it goes superheated and super dark this is beyond soda springs soda canyon road extracted from a giant boulder with rectangular elements intact also showing when you open up a flat smooth stone also Monticello Road you see internally it has the same appearance as the other components then some of the other red brick or red concepts we're not really sure what they are but they have the flat edges intact internal crystallization amazing color here uh, going to a quartz transition this one should be cut in half and polished but I have polished this edge uh, just took a few minutes takes a great shine this looks exactly like something that came out of the lime kilns or whatever on some of our favorite videos and I don't know where that came from this was along the railroad tracks Napa Valley basalt one side probably red brick on the other very good transition and just something that's amazing then of course we're getting into the uh, amalgams and slags what are they what are they so look at this incredible shine and twinkle glistening the glint all crystallized an amazing smooth surface mortar on one side extreme heat mortar on one side internal pockets of gassing bubbling with again the glint superheated quartz turned glass then along the railroad tracks there's obviously metal and this is just steel.
some sort of steel. But it appears to have um, really been hit with a hard charge. The inside is just exploding. From Glass Beach, Napa, Amalgam of Melt video. This thing has magnet. This thing sticks everywhere. Does everything is in that? What is that? Some of these some of these uh, pieces found trackside. Dixon and Sassoon. What are these? Do they have metal in them? Don't know. More slag. What is it? This one here. Metal. Nothing magnetic. But look at this piece here. Let's bring this over here. Look at those little buttons. Why is that vitrified and extremely shiny? What is that layer? At this angle, guess what? That's a drip. It's a drip. So here's the tools. If you want to bash, there's plenty of options and you don't have to spend a fortune. You can go to a garage sale or your shed. So my favorite, S-Swing Rock Hammer, fantastically weighted, great. Regular framing hammer. This one here might be amazing for anyone. Very lightweight. You just pick it up at a, a welding shop. So it's just for bashing slag off your welds. Regular household hammer. El Cheapo Gold Mining Hobbyist. Whatever. Call it whatever you want. So here's another piece of granite, and then I want to show you this again. What is it? What is it? Found track side. Evidence of heat. Exploding internal metal core. Exploding core. Which is, you know, of course, you know, it's strong magnetism. And then this one here, I don't even know what's happening. I don't know. No one knows. No one said anything. What is it? Is this industri industrial? Did the charge go through here? And that's obviously melted. I mean, there's no way around that. That is melted to the limit. And it's super crumbly. Quick little tour in the melt laboratory. So have a look at these items. Share them as you please. Um, ask me questions. I'll tell you exactly where I found it. I'll show you exactly where I found each of these, and they're not alone. It's everywhere. I can only carry so much in my bucket, right? So I hope all of you are enjoying uh, the videos, the presentations. Now we're going to get on to the experiments. Let's do the experiments. First, we'll just do regular aluminum foil, 30 seconds. And a ball. Nice loose ball. Get back. Okay, massive plasma fireball, super cool. Starting to melt, not hot to the touch. So first piece of brick, and this is one of the ones that uh, appears to have been melted. And we're getting that 85-ish. In. Let's go with one minute. And do the tripod. Five, four, three, one, off blast. Let's see what's going on in there. Doesn't smell weird. A 
Okay, 117. Uninteresting. More power. Let's go five minutes, and we'll talk about it later. All right, let's do this brick one. So I'm going to embed the steel rod into this brick by cutting a channel with my grinder. And then I'm going to sink it into there and then apply as hot as a weld as I possibly can. I have the welder on the highest setting, at which is D on Lincoln 3200 at wire speed four. So we're gonna see how that turns out. Then we're gonna polish this side. See if this will take a shine. The microwave is almost ready. Just a few seconds to go and it's stinky and it sounds like the microwave is laboring. This is a five minute look. Five minutes. Okay. Smells like a clay kiln. And it is. I saw 173. So super unimpressive but it had to be done. So make sure you have your ear protection and your eye goggles. So while setting up for this shot, I could hear the brick uh, kind of internally cracking. That noise you'd expect when uh, it's going back to cooler from a very hot state. So a little, little crinkling noise. Welder back on and staying at five and a half on the wire speed setting D. It's making the uh, welder labor, and I think I've got enough right there. Let's have a look close up. may have started that crack right directly above it. Very warm.
we're going to polish everything. Starting with 50 grit. Back where we started, back out at the flow chart, I brought back the uh, experimented brick, the one that I welded on and put a shine on. Let's have a look. So here's the welded piece. It's about ready to fall out right now. I'm going to pull it out in a second. Here's the regular side of the brick, and then you can see the shine. Can you see the shine coming on? So it was very time consuming. I was going to do the other pieces. I wanted to do the other pieces, but um, I'm actually sore. So when you are in a cemetery and you see any uh, high lustered polished granite that's beautiful, just remember there was an extreme process that goes into polishing that material. It can never be done by hand. And uh, using a power tool, it gets really poor results. This is precision machine work. Have a look at everywhere you go. There's some amazing, amazing egrets. Two of them. Hey, let's do this again.